Last night at the meeting, they were talking a lot about the mental dependence on alcohol. Um, a lot of people struggle with, you know, dealing with life on life terms, uh, myself included. You know, if something comes up and it really stresses you out or makes you sad or depressed or anxious or nervous or, you know, it's easy to rely on alcohol to kind of help alleviate some of that, you know, try and get you out of your head, you know, try and, and um, get you to forget about life's problems, where in reality, you're actually creating more problems. Because, you know, with alcoholism, you know, once you have one, you can't stop. And then all of a sudden, it's a couple of days later, and you've just created more issues than anything else. And then uh, the original problem's still there. Um, now you just have two problems to deal with. And um, what I wanted to talk about today was not only the uh, mental dependency, but, you know, unfortunately, we do get to a point where there is somewhat of a physical dependency as well. Um, you know, recently, I had relapsed a couple times and I did drink, you know, a couple days. And um, I definitely noticed that in the morning, when I wake up the next day, I just feel nauseous and sick and hungover and just in a bad, bad mood, just feel terrible. Um, and so my way of dealing with that, my way of getting rid of the hangover was to drink in the morning, you know, drink when I wake up. So that way my body is getting what it needs to make itself feel better quote unquote. Um, and I know that when I was, um, in my heaviest drinking, um, my body was very much dependent on alcohol. It would get to the point where, I mean, I was physically shaking every day. I would pour sweat every day. I would just, you know, hated, um, not having it because I knew that my body needed it every single day just to function, just to, you know, get through my day. And that you can very easily gain that physical dependence on it, just like you can with, you know, cigarettes or heroin or cocaine or whatever, whatnot, like your body needs it. Um, it's trying to fill something. And the only way to fill it, of course, is then to put whatever it is back in your body. Um, and when you start to come off of it, you know, the detoxes are horrific. Um, you know, I've met quite a few people that actually had to get medically detoxed from alcohol because they had drank so much that they could not detox at home. Um, it would make, you know, them physically ill, throwing up. I've done that. Um, it would make you very, very agitated. Um, I mean, it ruined your body. And when I was in treatment, when I went to rehab, um, unfortunately, there were two people there that I had witnessed that actually had seizures trying to detox from alcohol. Um, alcohol uh, is one of the worst drugs to try and detox from because it literally affects every organ of your body. Um, it's really such a terrible, terrible thing. And it's so sad because it's so easily accessible that it's very difficult to, to stop it, to get away from it, to, you know, you know, get away from alcohol because it's so easily accessible. But, you know, I remember one lady when I was in rehab, she had drank quite a bit that her body needed it, but she was traveling and she needed to travel, you know, quite a far distance enough that she needed to fly to the rehab that we were going to. And, you know, they told her, you know, on your way here, don't try and detox yourself. Keep drinking. Like if you have to drink at the airport, drink at the airport. If you have to drink beforehand or when you when you land, do that because she needed to be medically detoxed. Um, I remember the first couple of days I tried to detox were horrible. Sick to my stomach, shaking, couldn't mentally do anything, couldn't physically want to get out of bed. I mean, it's just the worst thing on the planet. And it's so sad when you see people at meetings and they're, you know, trying to detox it themselves at home and you really truly need someone there with you because it gets to the point that you are just at your worst. You are trying the hardest that you can to not go back to it. And you just know the answer. You know the answer that's going to make you feel better, but you have to fight that answer. Because your body is needing it. Your body craves it. Your body is physically at the point that it has to have this in order for it to, you know, just get, you know, get over it, you know. Um, I've met people that have drank perfume to help with the 
um, detoxes. I've met people that have drank mouthwash. I've met people that have put all kinds of disgusting stuff in their body just so that way their body would be sufficient with the alcohol that they were getting. And it's such a terrible thing. It really is. And, you know, I wish that, you know, it wasn't so easily accessible or just kind of thrown out there like it's, you know, your Friday night thing that you're going to do. No matter what you watch on TV, there's going to be a beer commercial. There's going to be a wine commercial. Um, you can buy it when you go to the grocery store. You can buy it when you go to a gas station. You can pretty much get it anywhere. I mean, even if you go to the pharmacy, a lot of pharmacies have wine and beer. You know, it's everywhere and you, and you can't escape it. And when you're in that point that you're, you need something so much that you're just willing to do whatever it takes. It's very difficult to just get away from it. Um, it's sad. It really, really is. Um, so I just wanted to talk about that as well, because, you know, once again, it's not just the mental part of your brain telling you like, you can do this. You know, it's lying to you. It's telling you all the sweet things that you want to hear. And, but it's also your body needs it too. Like your body physically needs this in it, just like food or water or whatever, you know, it's air. It's telling you that you need alcohol. It's such a crazy thing to think that your body is, is putting that on a level of basic needs. You know, it's on the level of you need substance, you need food, you need water, you need air, you need alcohol. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm glad that I'm at a point in time that I'm not at my worst and I'm not my best. Um, but you know, I don't ever want to go back to that because that was like the worst thing in the world. Um, I still get embarrassed when I think about it. I still like physically hate myself every time I think about it. But then here I am day three sober and I just put myself through four days of drinking because I thought I could have one because I lied to myself because alcohol really is so cunning and and it will sweet talk you in any way that it can to try and get you to pick up that first drink again so I'm excited to be sober today um you know we're, we're doing precautions at home just to make sure that I do remain sober um my husband has a breathalyzer that we had we had one from before but some you know suddenly it just kind of magically came up missing and we don't know where it went so bought a second one you know he's testing me as soon as I get home he's testing me like after you know I went to a meeting last night I did have to stop and get gas and he knew that you know this gas station sort of sold wine so he then came out and just you know walked me to the door just to make sure I didn't have anything in my purse wasn't make sure I wasn't hiding anything in my car you know just kind of breathalyzed me just to make sure I'm just being honest and at first, I thought I, it was being childish, and I was very mad about it, because I'm like, I don't need you on me 24-7, 365, but he just knows that he's doing this to keep me honest, and, you know, I'm wanting to prove that I can do these things without drinking, so, you know, it, it's the honesty program, and, you know, it's a tough pill to swallow, but I want to swallow it, because I don't want to have to do this anymore. Um, I don't want that physical dependence. I don't want the mental dependence. I want my independence from alcohol. So I hope everybody else is working on their independence as well. Um, you know, it's going to be a good day. It's actually warm out today, so I'm excited about that. And I will talk to you guys later.